So welcome everybody. Now there are 30 people with us. Uh, we hope that th th there were 60 that uh, registered to attend, so probably they, they will join us in the next minutes. So uh, welcome to the fifth uh, online IGMAP seminar. This is the fifth seminar that we do in this platform and we are very, very happy for all the attendees that we have. And also the visualizations also that we have in, in YouTube where, where we put also the seminars. Today we have with us uh, Jan Jelak, who is the, our speaker, hosted by Anna Roch, uh, uh, who is researcher at the Nanoparticles and Nanocomposites Group, and Jose Vidal, uh, who is the president of the, um, the, how do you call, the Waste and Prevention, Prevention and Health Committee at the IGMAP, uh, who will introduce us the, the speakers. Only for the attendees, I want to let you know that if you have questions uh, during the seminar or, or after the seminar, you can write them down in the questions and answer button that you have at the bottom of your screen here, or you can also write some comments in the chat if you wish. Okay, so without further ado, I now pass the, the floor to, to Pepe Vidal, who will introduce us the, the speakers today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anna. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce you, Ian Zelak. Uh, Ian is doing his PhD degree, as, as uh, Anna said, with an infinity scholarship in the Anna Royds group here at the IGMAP. And uh, he's going to talk about the face max during COVID-19 pandemic, current knowledge on materials and reusability. So Ian, uh, whenever you want. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, I hope that this, this seminar will be interesting for many of you as, the, um, as this is the topic that all of us can relate to uh, nowadays. And I would actually like to start, I would actually like to start by showing recent findings that uh, confirm what seems to be uh, intuitive, uh, that uh, physical distancing uh, together with use of face masks can result in, uh, in a large reduction of risk of infection with uh, coronavirus. Uh, the use of face masks uh, by the public is thought to be a major factor that could reduce the impact of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic and possibly uh, help uh, prevent its, uh, its second wave. And uh, as, you, as you probably know, uh, the virus doesn't travel in the air by, by itself, but rather inside uh, liquid droplets that can be emitted by coughing, sneezing, but also during normal speech. Uh, very large aerosols uh, settle rapidly and they travel only around one meter. Um, but smaller aerosols are particularly uh, dangerous because uh, the, the, the finest uh, of them, the ones below five micrometers, can enter the lower respiratory tract. And uh, the face masks can reduce the exposure to, to aerosols. So now they are a very hot and relevant topic uh, that raises many questions. And in this seminar, I will try to uh, answer some of these questions. Uh, I, will not, I will not tell you uh, which masks uh, to use. I leave it to everyone's common sense. However, I will explain uh, the working principle of masks, uh, the difference between different types, um, how, uh, how they are being tested in, in, in research labs. And uh, I will tell you also about uh, the current knowledge concerning the materials that are used for, for the pro production of masks and about current studies about um, disinfection and reuse reusability. Uh, here I would like to mention that uh, the work that I present is, uh, is not related to my research at all, and is mostly based on the works of, of the, these two scientists and uh, their research groups. Uh, let's start with a bit of history. Here you can see uh, a doctor from the 18th century, uh, from the time of the plague. As you can see, his, uh, his whole body is covered and he even carries a cane uh, to, to keep people away. You can say um, 18th century uh, method of social distancing. Uh, the, the mask uh, had the shape of a beak, like a bird's beak, and uh, it was filled with aromatic herbs to keep away the bad air. Uh, fortunately, science has advanced uh, since then, and it was found that the, the air itself does not cause infectious diseases, but rather germs or uh, germs such as viruses or bacteria. Uh, this knowledge also contrib uh, contributed to the development of, uh, 
of more efficient masks. So compared to the 18th century masks, here we have uh, the, um, the 21st century masks. And uh, you can, you, you're probably familiar with the sur surgical masks and, uh, and the respirators. And uh, what is the difference between these masks? Uh, each type of mask has to comply with specific requirements. Uh, the, the surgical masks have to filter at least 95% uh, uh, of the um, of the free microns uh, particles, um, and the respirators are theoretically more more efficient and have to comply with criteria concerning the filtration of 0.3 microns or, or 300 nanometer particles. Uh, there are very slight differences between the uh, N95 and um, FFP uh, masks. Um, the the the, the 95, N95 masks are um, U.S. standard, and the FFP masks are uh, are European standard. And um, N95 means that the the, the um, filter, filtration of 95 percent of 300 nanometers particles, uh, when um, FFP or filtering phase piece. Uh, is a standard that requires 94% or an, an 90, 99% filtration of such particles in case of FFP2 and FFP3 respectively. Uh, some respirators also contain a valve that allows uh, easier breathability, but uh, it should be taken in consideration that such masks only protect the user because the air escapes the valve without being filled. Uh, also anticipating uh, some questions, uh, 3M, um, 3M, that is a popular um, popular name, is not a type of mask. Uh, uh, 3M is a brand that produces FFP masks. The the categories that you you can um, that you can see are uh, FFP and N95. These are the most the most popular standards. So okay, N95 that is uh, basically equivalent to N95. Uh, I would also like to discuss an important concept uh, concerning part particle filtration by respirators. Um, because since N95 and uh, FFP2 masks are made to capture 95 or 94% of uh, 0.3 micron particles, uh, people often assume that masks cannot capture uh, particles smaller than this size at all. Uh, for example, here you can see there is an infographic from uh, South China Morning Post that is claiming just this. Um, however, that is not that is not true. Uh, empirical data finds that the masks are actually can actually capture a lot of particles that are smaller than that, and um, it's because uh, one cannot think of uh, particular respirators as sieves. They don't work as that. But uh, to explain uh, why why it's like that, I have to uh, describe uh, the the mechanism of filtration that that happens in masks. Uh, there are different filtration regimes uh, depending depending on uh, particle size. So for the biggest particles, uh, this, these particles have high inertia, and uh, this inertia is higher than the, the air drag force. Uh, so the particle deviates from uh, from the airflow streamlines and collide, collides with the fiber surface. Uh, particle deposition increases with the size and the, the velocity. Smaller particles. Uh, do not have enough inertia to break away from the from the airstream and uh, are dragged around, dragged around the fiber, but come close enough to the fiber to be attracted by forces of attraction, such as Van der Waals forces uh, between the fiber and the particle. Uh, electrostatic attraction occurs when the opposite electric charges are present between the, the particles and the fibers, and as, as a result, particles are attracted to the walls of fibers. This mechanism is, uh, is sufficient for the smallest, for, for very fine particles. And uh, 300 nanometers is a size that lies between the two regimes, the interception and the electrostatic attraction regime. And these particles are the hardest one to filter, hence the, uh, the criteria of um, 300 nanometer that is uh, called the most penetrating particle size. Uh, due to the shortage of masks, uh, the cloth or do-it-yourself masks are being increasingly used. And um, detailed studies uh, are required to know the performance of different fabrics that are used uh, for, for uh, these uh, this cloth masks. And another important aspect is the effect of the tightness of fit, or how, how important good adjustment of masks to the face 
is for uh, protection against particles. So in a recent study, the filtration efficiency of aerosols in a broad size range was studied for, for different fabrics. Here you can see that many different materials were used in the study. Um, there was cotton of different tightness of threads or threads per inch, a silk flannel of, of chiffon or chiffon. Uh, here, there's the experimental setup used for measuring filtration efficiency of different fabrics. And here, the air is flowing from the upstream chamber to the downstream chamber that are connected with a PVC tube. The PVC tube is sealed with the st uh, studied specimen. And uh, sodium chloride particles are generated randomly uh, in a size range from tens of nanometers to several micrometers. Uh, the concentration of particles is, is measured upstream and downstream and compared. And uh, for higher, uh, for, for bigger sizes, uh, the particles are counted by um, optical, uh, optical sizer. And for smaller particles of, of nanometer, uh, nanometer size, uh, are measured by uh, the nanoscan equivalent. Uh, additionally, the, the effect of, gap, of gaps between uh, the contour of the face and the mask have been simulated by drilling holes that are approximately 2% uh, of, the, um, of the active area of the, of the specimen. Here you can see an example result, a histogram of particle concentrations as function of different particle sizes um, for, for cotton here in this case. Uh, the filtration efficiency is, is expressed as a difference between the, the upstream and downstream concentrations divided by the, the upstream concentration. Uh, so this is a, a value uh, between zero and one. In case of commercially used masks, we can see that the filtration efficiency about 300 nanometers is around 100% uh, as expected. And um, in, 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 this, uh, in this study, um, different uh, cotton samples were used, cotton with different thread counts. Uh, and it was clear that tighter woven cotton was, was, uh, had superior filtration with 90% efficiency at about 300 nanometers and around 65% efficiency below this range. Uh, the electrostatic interactions are commonly observed in various, uh, various natural and synthetic fibers. For instance, uh, polymer woven fabrics can retain more static charge compa uh, compared to natural fibers or, or cotton due to the, their lower uh, water absor absorption properties. Uh, so the, uh, the authors of the study investigated three uh, fabrics um, that are expected to possess moderate uh, electrostatic discharge value. So silk, uh, chiffon, that is poly uh, polyester uh, expanded, and flannel, that is a mix of cotton and polyester. In case of silk, uh, measurements were made with one to one four layers of the fabric as silk scarves are often wrapped multiple times around the, uh, around the face. In all of this case, uh, these cases, the performance in filtering small particles is superior to performance uh, in, the, uh, in the higher par particle range and particularly effective below uh, 30 nanometers, consistent with uh, the expectations from the electrostatic effects. And uh, another, another result, uh, well, uh, another conclusion is that uh, the number of layers increases the performance. Uh, then the authors combined the, the nanometer size aerosol effectiveness uh, for silk, chiffon, or flannel with the overall high performance of the 600 thread per inch uh, cotton to examine the filtration of, of these, uh, these hybrids, hybrid approaches. Uh, so they made uh, measurements from, for the following variations, cotton and silk, cotton and chiffon, and cotton and flannel, and, and also compared them with N95 uh, uh, commercial mask. Um, all three hybrid combinations performed well, and um, they exceeded 80% efficiency in the 300 nanometer, uh, in the range below 300 nanometers, and 90% in the, in, the in the higher range. The, um, the cloth hybrids are slightly inferior to the N95 masks above uh, 300 nanometers, but uh, perform better in the, in the lower range. 
then um, the effect of gaps uh, was was studied so as i said before in this um, in this tube that is connecting the chambers um, the holes were were drilled holes that had approximately to uh, two percent of the of the total area of the sample and uh, it it was clearly seen um, it was clearly seen that uh, the openings and gaps decrease the the filtration efficiency significantly so it's it's um, it pronounces the the importance of of tightness of fit of the mask to the face here you uh, can see a summary of all the uh, all the studies done uh, in in this article and in summary, to, to summarize it, um, the um, cotton, silk, and chiffon uh, were found to, to have high filtration efficiencies. Uh, tighter weaves are better than open weaves. And uh, some hybrid, hybrid approaches uh, are also good for filtration in the whole, in the whole uh, particle size range um, as they combine static and mechanical filtration. Another aspect that has to be taken into account is that um, this, this, the measurements were done in uh, perfect conditions. They were not done in real life conditions. So also the effect of humidity and, um, and also the washability of, of, the, of the masks uh, has, to be, has to be further studied. In uh, another important study, uh, it was, um, well, another important study uh, was performed concerning the possibility of um, possibility to reuse N95 masks. N95 or, or FFP respirators are essential for protecting healthcare workers or uh, the general public who may be exposed to the virus. And uh, because of the, of the big shortage of such masks, uh, scientists are investigating if these masks can be reused after, after disinfecting. Uh, recent studies found that the coronavirus can stay at surfaces even up uh, for up to 72 hours. So it's important to develop uh, procedures for the safe and frequent reuse uh, of, uh, of face respirators without reducing the filtration efficiency. So, um, what is the, the structure of the of the N95 or FFP mask? Uh, the, these kind of masks uh, are composed of uh, of many layers. And the, the layer that is the, the most important one for the, for the function of the mask is the melt bloom layer, the layer that is in the middle. And here you can see the, the structure, the, um, the electron microscopy image of this, uh, of this layer. And uh, this melt bloom layer, um, well, what is melt bloom? It's, melt blowing is, is a conventional fabrication method of micro and nanofibers where a polymer melt is extruded through small nozzles surrounded by uh, high speed blowing gas. And uh, the fibers are deposited ra randomly and form a non woven sheet. Here you can see the, the, the mechanism, the, um, the schematic of the, of the process, and, uh, and the picture of the, of the industry, of this uh, industrial fabrication. So uh, this layer has around 100 to 1000 uh, uh, micrometers in thickness. And is composed of uh, polypropylene, uh, polypropylene microfibers. And so what, is, uh, what can seem surprising to you is that uh, this material has 90% porosity. So you can think, how can it be used in, uh, in filtration of particles if, if it's so porous, if, it's, if it has 90% porosity? Well, uh, the, the important part is this. So, so these uh, fibers are being charged. Uh, to form uh, quasi-permanent dipoles, also called electrodes, and these uh, dipoles um, are are stopping the the smaller particles because of the electrostatic interactions. So in this study, uh, the melt blown fabric from a 95 mask, so this middle layer, was uh, was uh, investigated, and uh, more uh, more precisely, how the filtration efficiency may change after exposure to different factors. In worst case scenario, because, because the, the protective layers, the outer layers are omitted in this study. So uh, the, um, the factors that, that the, the authors have used are heat, steam, uh, treatment in ethanol, uh, or in chlorine, and also in uh, ultraviolet light. So uh, first of all, you can see 
that uh, after treatment uh, with ethanol or with chlorine, the filtration efficiency drops uh, significantly. Uh, however, the, the pressure drop, which is like an indication of breathability, um, remains unchanged. It, it means that the, the structure of the, of the fibers remains intact, remains intact, and, um, and it means that um, the efficiency degradation is attributed to the decrease of, uh, of the static charge. So it can be explained by the absorbing of uh, of uh, small molecules of the solvent onto fibers and uh, screening uh, the, the charges. There are pre preliminary studies on uh, um, restoring this efficiency of filtration in this case by packing drying. The remaining uh, free treatments that were used were heat, uh, so 75 degrees uh, for 30 minutes per cycle. Uh, steam, so 10 minutes in a beaker of boiling, uh, well, the 10 minutes in steam that come, uh, came from beaker of boiling water, and um, a treatment by UV light uh, for 30 minutes. Um, the results were the following. Um, after 10 cycles, the heat and the UV treatment didn't change the efficiency nor the, the, the pressure drop. However, after four cycles, the treatment in steam decreased the efficiency uh, significantly. Uh, but, but also uh, the, the pressure drop was, was uh, very, very similar. It, me it meant that also, um, that also uh, it was attributed to the decrease of the, of the electrostatic charge. Uh, and um, well, in this case, the efficiency is not sufficient in an environment with, with uh, high concentrations of the, of the virus. Here, uh, there are uh, other studies uh, focusing on, on heat. So 85, uh, treatment in 85 uh, degrees Celsius uh, with different humidities. And it was found that even at 100% uh, uh, humidity, um, the, the efficiency didn't drop uh, even after 20 cycles. And here you can, you can see uh, the, um, the efficiency um, for, for uh, as a function of, of, of treatment cycle in different, um, in different temperatures. And here in this case, uh, at low humidity, um, it was found that uh, at temperatures above 100 degrees, the, um, the fibers are not as effective anymore. They, they are depolarized. Then the authors um, measured the um, the efficiency, the filtration efficiency of commercial masks of different brands, 3M, 4C, OP, and ES. And, um, and in this case, they use different treatments. They, they use uh, treatment in 85 degrees in all, all cases at two different humidities, at low and high humidity, uh, for 10 and 20 cycles. And it was found that for, for, each, um, uh, for each mask, for, for each uh, commercial mask, the efficiency was very high even after 20 cycles, uh, regardless of the, of the humidity. Uh, however, it, it, is also, it also has to be noted that the tightness of fit, again, is not, uh, has not been taken into account. The authors also uh, commented um, the treatment uh, in, the, in the UV light. Um, and even though the efficiency didn't drop significantly in this case, uh, the authors do, do not recommend the treatment with UV light because um, polypropylene that uh, makes the, that, uh, the, the, the meltdown fiber is, is, is composed of is a UV absorber. What does it mean? Uh, it can mean that uh, the, the UV light um, may not penetrate deep enough to, to neutralize all the, all the virus that are, that are absorbed on the, on the fibers of the, of the mask. And also, um, it is suspected that, that uh, UV light can cause potential damage to, to fibers and weaken its mechanical strength. Uh, how is it re related to the, the stability of, of, of the virus? Because uh, it is important to, in this study, it was important to, to see uh, if we can neutralize the virus to, 
uh, to reuse the mask. So uh, there are some studies that say that um, complete disinfection can be achieved for uh, 70 degrees uh, treatment in, in solution for five minutes or in dry heat for 60 minutes and 70 degrees. Uh, to summarize this part, um, I, I would like to say that the ethanol and chlorine are not recommended for, uh, for uh, treatment of, of masks because they, they can limit the electrostatic filtration efficiency. Um, in case of dry heat, it is safe, for, uh, it is safe to treat uh, the masks uh, even up to 100 degrees. Uh, well, not, not exactly the mask, but the N95 mask blown fabric, that is the, the most important layer of the mask. And in humid heat, uh, temperatures up to 95 degrees are also safe. The UV light treatment is not reliable for the treatment of masks because uh, they, can, uh, they may not penetrate uh, deep enough in the fibers. And uh, another important aspect is that the tightness of fit should be always taken into account. So the straps should be robust enough to, to, to prevent uh, the formation of, of gaps. And uh, that is all. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting for your questions, if you have any. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jan, for this seminar. Um, so, attendees, if you have some questions about uh, masks, now it's your turn to ask Jan. Maybe he knows the answer. I sit for a moment. Pepe, do you have uh, any question for Jan? I have a question. I, it's very interesting the talk because I thought that the the uh, UV visible um, uh, light. Uh, could destroy the, the virus, uh, for example, to put in the, in the sunlight the mask for mm -hmm. 50 minutes, it would be okay. And, and you demonstrate that is not the, the, the best uh, way to, to uh, destroy the virus. Well, destroy the virus, maybe, maybe yes, but the problem is that you destroy the mask uh, too. No? So the, the best condition is to hit the, the, the mask below 100 degrees. Yes. And uh, important uh, and, and the humidity uh, close to 80, 90 percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And different humidities. It was safe at 85 degrees, but even to 95 degrees, as this study is indicated. And and this idea of the, a lot of people uh, do that this uh, uh, if you have a, a a mask, uh, uh, in particular, when you is is a handmade mask uh, mm -hmm. uh, at home, and the people uh, iron the mask, uh, this is could be okay. Uh, well, I I'm not entirely sure because you heat the mask and 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 maybe you can use the the, the humidity system of the of the iron. Mm. Yes, I'm not sure. This, here, here uh, the, all these studies that uh, were presented in the second part um, concern the, the melt blown fabric. That is different to, well, of course, it's different than uh, fabrics that are used for, for cloth masks. So all these materials that were, uh, that were studied here, like cotton or, or silk, all these, these, um, fa uh, these fabrics. So, I think this this should be a topic of another study, maybe to to confirm if if it if it is safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a question from Federica. She says, "Do you know if dry heat is the best way also to hygienize reusable hygienic masks? If not, which one?" Uh, reusable hygienic masks. Mm -hmm. um, well, this I don't know. I, I I don't know. It was not it was not covered in this in this study, and uh, I cannot I cannot confirm for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another question says, what about cellulose? Is it a good filter against the virus? Uh, cellulose. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's also worth trying. I think there are there are some studies also. Um, also focusing on cellulose and its, uh, its filtration efficiency, but 
because it also has fiber structure and um, well I, I think that well I, I, I don't uh, I don't have these results I don't uh, I, I don't know but I think that it's worth trying probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and um, then in the chat there is another question it says concerning commercial masks do you have a recommendation oh uh, <laughs> well it is um, it is known that well theoretically the, um, the n95 or the FFP masks are the most efficient they they have to be uh, predominantly um, available for the medical personnel and also the, 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 the people that that are exposed that are really exposed to the virus mm -hmm. but um, we all know the shortage that, that there's a shortage of such type of types of masks so um, well I, I cannot recommend anything because I'm not an authority in this in, the, in this topic but um, well um, well, all these studies are also done to to evaluate if different kinds of masks can be can be used. But um, but for like, I th I think this is only my um, my uh, observation that for uh, not for not for work or like not for situations where you are really exposed to the virus. I think that this kind of uh, cloth masks are a good um, good alternative, and uh, as you can see, as you can see here in the study, um, different combinations like combinations of the uh, the, the um, fabrics that filter in two different ways, like the electrostatic filtration and mechanical filtration, um, they seem to be quite effective. Of course, uh, there should be. Uh, more studies on this and also the tightness of fit is very important. I, I would like to uh, Point out that regardless of the mask that, that you are using I make sure that the fit is tight because as you uh, as you saw here the the gaps can reduce uh, the, the filtration the filtration efficiency significantly so uh, If you can strap them tighter and or use something to to to, to make the, the fit tighter, it's uh, well, it's very important. Right. So I understood that that the homemade masks, no, made by cloth, are effective, uh, but you have to use them that it fits your face, no, that it, there's no gaps. Yes, or, yes. No well, according to, according to yes, according to these studies. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. However, the, uh, the cloth masks, as for now, are not uh, are not recommended by the World Health Organization for work environments. But yes. but to walk on the streets and yes, for like open the, uh, when, the when public transport. The uh, There's another question regarding. He says, "I'm not sure if you mentioned or not. Are microwaves absorbed by viruses?" Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, um, so the authors of the second study uh, of this uh, of this reusability study have also um, have also considered microwave treatment. However, um, the, um, the 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 particle respirators come also with with other uh, other parts uh, with other components. Uh, the components that are used to uh, to to fit the mask to the to the nose. Um, you know these these adjustable pieces, and um, these pieces um, can be made of metal. So treatment in microwaves in this case is uh, is not possible. Mm. Ah, the piece this, that holds here in in the nose, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, this, the, the adjustable part. Yes. Mm. This, this is the main problem with the mask uh, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, the the metal parts is is. Uh, not possible to put in the microwave because you destroy the, the system. I think that the most important thing is to fit very well the mask in, in your face. It's, this is very, very important. Um, there's another question. It says, mm -hmm. are there also studies on reusing surgical masks? If not, do you think that the conclusions from the N95 studies you mentioned do also apply? I think that it is recommended 
um, that uh, the surgical masks um, are used only uh, once. That what well, they are they are made to to be um, well they are made for single use. And as far as I know, it is not recommended to to use this kind of masks. And the, there's another question. The N95. Uh, it says, how many times actually can they be sanitized and reused? Mm. Well, so according to according to these studies, even 20 cycles didn't damage the structure or the you know, the, um, the electrostatic properties. 20. Mm. However, uh, this didn't uh, take into account the the other elements of the masks, such as the straps or the, the adjustable piece. So it was not um, seen if it if it um, affects the the tightness of fit. So mm -hmm. can you put a, a, a picture of the N95 mask? Yes, because of course. Now I don't remember what mask it was. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So well, this is. Ah, so it's one of the white ones. Okay. <laughs> well, this is uh, well. I, I don't know if this one is exactly the N95. Well, it's uh, one of these because you know these are different different standards that are very similar, but these are like yeah. the FFP or the European. Yeah. Well, it, re regarding with the European uh, uh, labeling, is the E5P1 normally are the single use uh, mask face, the, the the surgical mask. Then the uh, if if P2 is, is similar to this picture, and the if if P3 normally is similar but with a bulb. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's, a, mm. and, and it's very important to know that the if if P2 and the if if P3 uh, protect yourself from the particles that came from outside. Exactly. But not uh, protect the other people from you, because there is a bulb, and the the only max that the protect uh, the other people from you is the if 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 p one. So, for example, sometimes could be uh, necessary in the lab. For example, if you can use an if if p three to protect yourself from a, a dangerous particle in the lab, for example. In these cases, it's necessary to use two max, one E5P3 to protect yourself and one E5P1 to protect the other people surrounding you in the lab. Mm -hmm. This is important. Eh? But the most important thing is the fit of the, of the mask in, in your face and then to use properly. This is a, mm -hmm. the important question. Yes. There's another common. Uh, it says the studies on sterilization were only done for the main filtering layer. So using heat or steam is not determined to be compatible with a fully assembled mask, right? That's true. I think what you just mentioned, no? True. Yes, no, this is true. Uh, this was made for the, the key layer, the, the most important layer, the meltdown melt layer. Mm -hmm. And it did not take into consideration the, the protective layers on both sides. So this this should be also evaluated, I think. Okay. But uh, but the, the layer that was studied is is the the most important for for the filtration of these masks. So okay. if if this if this layer does not get damaged, it's uh, well, it's very promising. Okay. I think that that's no more comments. Uh, I think there is one more. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, there is one more. Ah, just now, yeah, it appeared. Uh, is N100 better than N95? I don't know. Uh, N100, uh, well, uh, N100 is supposed to be better than uh, 95 because it is made to filter more than 99.97% of these 0 0.3 microns uh, particles. So, so yes, it is also, um, um, well, it's it, it's it's one of the well, this one and the FFP3 are the ones that protect the most. Uh, so, so what do you do in, in your normal day when you go out? What is your recommendation? What? Uh, well, I I don't want to recommend anything because I'm not an I'm not an expert. So, 
I leave it to to the common sense of everybody. But uh, it's important, I think, that to to stop or to reduce the spread of the virus, it's important that all of us wear masks and keep the distance uh, because these are the factors that are the most important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Well. Tete, Ana, Martí, any other comment? Well, <laughs> no, I only to thank uh, Ian because this very interesting uh, talk. I think that we have a lot of data and it's, it's possible to check the, the particular situations of everybody. And, and related with the question, the, the last question, Anna, is about, well, in, in the general situation in the Institute, for example, it's necessary that everybody use the single use face match, that everybody use it. And mm -hmm. then in a particular situations in the lab, maybe it's necessary to use other Mm, better uh, max like the, the, the P3 or P2, but this is the, the, the situation. And this is very important to, to be careful with the, the, the fit of the mask in your face. If not, forget it. It, it doesn't matter the kind of mask that you use, it, it's, 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 uh, uh, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll have to get used to having the mask, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much, Jan, for the talk. Thank you, Pepe, thank you. for introducing, and Marti and Anna for hosting and inviting Jan to do this seminar. Uh, thank you all for being here, all the attendees, and see you in next seminar. Next Monday, we have another seminar by David Mabellino, so I'm sure it will, will be also very interesting. So thank you all. Okay, see you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.